Let's be honest with ourselves. In life, you don't want to be forgotten. When you end up succeeding in something, you don't want people to look past it. You don't want people to call you a fraud and people waiting for you to retire even if you're still doing a solid job. This is exactly what Matt Crafton is going through. Yeah, Matt Crafton, a 15-time race winner and a three-time Truck Series champion. Some would say his career was odd. It is a couple of things about Matt Crafton's NASCAR career that does make him stand out in a strange way. Matt Crafton is not the first to be a Truck Series lifer, but what separates him from other Truck Series legends is that he never attempted to become a Cup Series driver. A lot of NASCAR truck legends like Ron Hornaday, Mike Skinner, Ty Bodine, and Jack Sprague actually attempted to go cup racing, and unfortunately for a lot of these guys, it didn't work out so well, so they became Truck Series lifers and found a good amount of success in that series. With Crafton, it's different, and he gets a lot of crap thrown at him for it. Maybe he tried to get a full-time cup deal and it just didn't come together. After all, Matt Crafton didn't start having success in the Truck Series until his mid-30s. At that point, Cup Series teams most likely wasn't looking at him, but even if he made a decision to not want to race in Cup, he shouldn't be crapped on for that decision if that was the case. Matt Crafton's truck career spans all the way back to the year 2000. He's been in this game for 24 years as of recording this video, and when you look at the amount of career wins he has in 24 seasons, it makes people scratch their heads. How is it that he only has 15 career wins with 20 plus years in this series? Let me start off by saying that Matt Crafton isn't this incredible talent, but he is a good solid driver. He's always been a consistent driver, and most of the time he can run top 10 when the equipment is good. Speaking of equipment, he spent 23 of his 24 seasons with Thor Sport, which hasn't always been a top-notch organization like how they've been with in the past decade. Outside of one season, Matt Crafton stuck with Thor Sport and helped build them up to be the powerhouse they are today, and unfortunately, a lot of people look past it. Thor Sport came about in 1996, but didn't go full-time racing in the truck series until 1998. Terry Cook got them their first career win as an organization in their first full season, but they moved on from Cook by the end of 2000. Then came Matt Crafton, who made his Truck Series debut at Fontana and got a top 10 in his debut. The team signed Crafton to a full-time deal in 2001, and yeah, nothing magical happened. From 2001 to 2003, he got no wins and no top 10 points finishes. Thor Sport was a middle-of-the-road team around this time, and Matt Crafton is a driver that runs where the truck is supposed to run for the most part. Also, during this time period, Thor Sport suffered a ton of mechanical failures, and you could just tell regardless of the driver, this team wasn't going in the right direction. You also add in the fact that Matt Crafton was still learning the ropes as he was early in his career and was in his early to mid-20s. So I already know what people are about to bring up. His opportunity with KHI, Kevin Harvick Incorporated. A truck team Kevin Harvick owned from 2001 to 2011. Here's the thing about KHI, they weren't that great of a team as well. Prior to Crafton joining KHI in 2004, they had two wins as an organization that was the owner himself winning those races. Matt Crafton was KHI's first full-time driver and after one season, he didn't do bad. As a matter of fact, it was Crafton's breakout season up to that point. Only 6 top 5s, but he had 17 top 10s in a 25 race season and finished 5th in points. No wins, but that's a really solid season. So you would think they would bring him back after that good season, right? Nope. Matt Crafton got replaced by Ryan Hornaday, which, yeah, that's not a bad choice at all. He's a multi-time champion. KHI probably thought Crafton underperformed, even though the organization clearly wasn't dominant, and this was proven by Ryan Hornaday's performance in 2005. Ryan Hornaday performed about the same as Matt Crafton did in 2005. He had more top fives and finished higher in points than Crafton by one position, but had less top tens and an 11.6 average finish to Crafton's 10.8 in 2004. So they were about even except in the win column. Ron Hornaday won a race in 2005 at Atlanta. Even though Hornaday won a race which most likely convinced KHI to stick with him, it's kind of shocking they decided to choose a 47 year old who was probably past his prime instead of a guy that was 29. But Hornaday proved that he wasn't past his prime as he went on to win plenty of more races and two more championships. All with KHI who improved as a team down the road. But when Crafton was there in 2004, they weren't that dominant of a team like they were in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Speaking of Matt Crafton, where did he go after he got replaced by Ron Hornaday? Well, back to Thor Sport. Was it better than his first stint with the team? Barely. In 2005, he finished top 10 in points with that team for the first time, but he went winless. 2006, he took a step back, finishing 14th in points with no wins. 2007, he got back into the top 10 in points, finishing 8th. 
Did he get a win? No. This was Matt Crafton's Achilles heel. He couldn't win a damn race. He was consistent. Getting top 10s and good points finishes wasn't really the issue for the most part. Door Sports still wasn't all that good during this time, but you would think something will eventually come together for this team. Up to this point, they only had one career win as an organization. But finally, in 2008, they visit Victory Lane again, and for Matt Crafton, it would be his first career win. Dragging the ground, it's, it's not working right at all. This is intense here. Eric Darnell. Oh, oh no! Look at this. Start. Darnell can't get a good start. Johnny Benson goes beside him on the outside. Darnell still trying to come up to speed. Matt Crafton goes by him. What a heartbreak for Eric Darnell. Look at here comes Matt Crafton. He looks to the outside of Johnny Benson. They go down the back stretch side by side. Crafton looking for his first win in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And he's got Chad McCombie all over him. Well, Rick, we all know that it's been a long time coming for Matt Crafton if he's able to win this race. 178th start for him tonight. But how about Duke and Rhonda Thorson, the owners of this Thor Sport Racing Team? Their last victory was at Flemington Speedway in 1998. And get this, that was 238 races ago. So Crafton trying to break that record of futility. Duke and Rhonda Thorson hoping to get Thor Sport Racing back to victory lane. Could be a big night here. And there you see Dennis Connor, who has gone up to take charge of running the entire team up at Thor Sport Racing. Crafton has a shot here at a green-white checker to maybe win his first race in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Here comes Eric Darnell. He's underneath Terry Cook, or excuse me, Rick Crawford for the fourth spot. The final lap at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Matt Crafton leading by two truck Perfect. lengths over hey, Chad everybody. McCombie. I like that corner by Fine. Crafton. He ran the middle of the track. Hopefully he'll do that again down in four. I think he needs to run the middle. One final chance. Here comes Chad McCombie. He looks down low. Now he peeks up high. Here comes Brendan going on the high side. Coming out of turn number four. Can Matt Crafton hold on to win his first ever truck race? He will. Matt Crafton wins and lows. This win was the start of something. Crafton went on to finish fifth in points, tying his career best. But in 2009, him and Thor Sport really started to take off. No, Crafton didn't win, but he had a breakout season in every other statistical category. 11 top 5s, 21 top 10s, 2 poles, and had a ridiculous average finish of 6.7. These numbers he put up in 2009 didn't get the job done, unfortunately. He finished second in points to Ron Hornaday 187 points back. Hornaday was just ridiculous that year, and if it wasn't for him, Crafton would have won his first championship. It's kind of like Mark Martin's 1998 season. He was really good that year, but it was someone that was having a legendary season that prevented him from winning the title. And that's what Ron Hornaday they had in 2009. Matt Crafton just continued to be his consistent self. Not winning, but taking care of his equipment and still getting great points finishes. But Crafton started becoming a winner and a consistent winner at that in the mid 2010s. A win in 2013, two wins in 2014, six wins in 2015, two wins in 2016, and a win in 2017. What else did he accomplished during this time span? He won two NASCAR Truck Series championships. During this time period, Matt Crafton was at his peak. Let's take a look at his championships. He went full on 2003 Matt Kenseth in 2013 with winning the championship after only winning one race. Oh no, we need a playoffs in the Truck Series, which they unfortunately implemented a few years later. He went back to back in 2014, winning two races this time en route to the championship that year. Crafton won these championships by being super consistent, which is what it took to win championships in a season long points format. Now let's look at his third championship, which is very controversial to a lot of people. The Truck Series eventually went to a playoff format like the Cup Series did, and this system is supposed to reward winning. Well, Matt Crafton said fuck that and won the championship without winning a race in 2019. He wasn't the best driver that year looking at points earned and average finish, but he survived the rounds and found his way into the Final Four and won the championship. I absolutely hate the playoffs with a passion, but I'm going to say what some people say when it comes to a driver not actually being the best, but proceeds to win the championship. Crafton did what he had to do to be successful under the format that was given. Everyone knows the format going into the season and Crafton came out on top at the end of the day. I hate this format, but for the sake of this video, I gotta say that. Matt Crafton broke the system. A format that's supposed to be all about winning and here's someone winning the championship without winning a race. Matt Crafton won his three championships in different ways and people just gloss over it. 
He got Dual Sport their first championship. People don't acknowledge that. He's got the most starts in the truck series by far and most people will say, eh, who cares? Of his 542 starts, he got 320 top 10s, which is pretty damn stout. People probably forget that he's a three-time champion of the series. People look past all of this. Matt Crafton is just forgettable to people and he doesn't get his flowers. I know he's probably not the most likable person out there, especially when you listen to his radio. Together. What the f what the but I feel like we shouldn't just look past his accomplishments because of his personality. People do the same thing with Denny Hamlin. Matt Crafton's career is winding down. As of recording this video, he's 47 years old. He has more races behind him than in front of him. But he's still competitive. No, really, he is. He makes the playoffs every season, he runs in the top 10 in most races, and he's doing this deep into his 40s. He's past his prime, but it's not like he's a moving chicane out there just in the way every week. He's not doing what Ryan Hornaday was doing in his late 40s, but at least he's competitive. His last win as a recording this video came at Kansas in 2020, and I just remember seeing comments like, oh yeah, I forgot Matt Crafton is in the field. The one time Matt Crafton shows up this year. And prior to that victory, the last time he won a race was in 2017. He just broke a two year winless streak and nobody seemed to care and it wasn't really celebrated. When Matt Crafton retires, I feel like it's gonna be celebrated but not in a good way, more like good riddance. It's a messed up deal. People already didn't respect Crafton to begin with and when you look at what happened with the whole deal between Nick Sanchez and him, it really doesn't make people respect Matt Crafton. Even though it's two sides to the story and we just don't know which side is true. If Matt Crafton really did sucker punch Nick Sanchez, then that's definitely a bad look, no doubt about it. But that one incident shouldn't overshadow all of his success on the racetrack. That's just my opinion, but I already know people would say otherwise. Matt Crafton isn't some successful Cup Series driver, but he is a NASCAR legend at the end of the day because of what he accomplished in the NASCAR Truck Series. It's just messed up that he's one of the most disrespected and forgotten legends in the sport. So I want to hear from y'all. What are y'all thoughts on Matt Crafton? Do you agree or disagree that he's a disrespected legend in NASCAR? Did this video change your view on Matt Crafton? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and roll up out of here. Y'all have a good one. Peace.